The time has come. Disney just released the first two episodes of the Santa Claus's show on Disney Plus, and as promised, I am here to give you my thoughts and review for the show. I just want to preface this review by saying I'm going to address all spoilers basically for every single one of these videos where I'm reviewing the show. It's, it's going to be complete spoiler talk, so I'm just warning you right now. I will always have a spoiler warning beforehand, but I'm going to just dive right into this because I feel like most of the people watching this video right now, they don't care about spoilers, and you're also watching the show with me. But if you haven't watched the show, go watch it, come back, and I would love for you to hear my thoughts. So the way that each one of these reviews is going to be structured is I'm going to be talking about the nice, which is the stuff I like in the show, the naughty, the stuff that I don't really like in the show or could use some improvement. And we're also going to be doing a Bernard watch because I know a lot of you literally subscribe to my channel just because of my original Bernard video, which I really appreciate. Thank you so much for subscribing. So I want to take as much time as we need to talk about Bernard, whether he's in the episode or not in the episode, just to basically check the pulse of where our favorite head elf Bernard is. So let's start off with The Nice. This show is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I went into this show with really, really low expectations. I wasn't expecting a cinematic masterpiece. To give you some context, the Santa Claus movies to me, if I was like tier listing them, would be Santa Claus 1, I think is like an S tier Christmas movie. I think Santa Claus 2 is like a C tier Christmas movie. And I think Santa Claus 3 is like an F tier Christmas movie. And not even because Bernard's not in. I just don't think it's a very good movie. That's just kind of my opinion on the Santa Claus movies. Obviously, you can have whatever your opinion about the movies. You can love all three of them. You can hate all three of them. I don't really care. That's just kind of my opinion on the movies. I don't think they're all perfect, but I definitely think the first one is by far the best. So when I went into this show, the expectations for me were super super low. I was expecting it to be just not that great. And I was completely fine with that. So I was genuinely surprised with how much I enjoyed the show. And I don't think it was necessarily even like the show show, if that even makes sense. I think that the thing that I enjoyed most about the show, just jumping into it was I just really liked being in this world again. It was almost like when The Hobbit released and it was like, we're just going back to Middle Earth and The Hobbit movies weren't incredible, but it was just so fun being in Middle Earth again. And it's pretty weird to have Lord of the Rings and the Santa Claus franchise in the same sentence, but I mean, the Santa Claus franchise is like my Middle Earth. As for other things that I liked, I thought that all the new characters that were introduced were a lot of fun. I thought Betty, who's the new head elf, did a pretty good Bernard impression. Uh, Noel had some cringy lines and some cringy moments, but I thought he was a fine character. He's pretty fun. And just all the other child actor elves, I thought all did a pretty solid job. I'm not expecting Oscar-worthy performances from these child actors, so... They did exactly what they needed to do. I weirdly really enjoyed Cal Penn's performance as Simon, who's kind of the B-plot character in this whole show. I think it could have been really easy to just make him like a super conniving, evil, I deliver toys better than Santa character. But they really like made him a very like genuine and good character, which I think will be interesting as the show goes on. Even little moments like him shutting his computer and telling his employees to go spend time with their families on Christmas Eve or in the drone scene where there's like a bunch of very evil people in suits it establishes early on that this guy is not a bad guy he's just really adjacent bad to santa where it's like he's not doing anything bad but because he is doing the thing that santa is also doing it looks bad to santa where he's not actually a bad guy and i think that will be very interesting as the show goes on where if he maybe establishes some villain type tendencies but for right now he's just like a, a guy trying to do his job another thing that i really enjoyed about both episodes was elizabeth mitchell as mrs claus i feel like mrs claus in the last two santa claus movies has been extremely one note in Santa Claus 2, she literally is like a plot device. And then in Santa Claus 3, her entire personality is like, I miss my family and I'm pregnant. And she just is like super one note as a character. So it was very fun to see her actually have things to work with and be more established as a character. And also her asking questions about past Santas and past Mrs. Clauses is super interesting and something we have just never even touched upon in this franchise. This show could go super existential at some points and I don't think it will because it's a kid's show and I don't think they want to dive into those topics, but 
just asking about past Santa Clauses is super weird, and I would love for the show to address it, but I don't think it will. But if it does, hey, props off to them. And the last thing that I really loved about the show is these two boys right here. It was great. I mean, Tim Allen killed it as Santa like usual, and it was so, so good to see Charlie. I thought the scene between Santa and Charlie was just, it was great. It felt like if that is the only time we're going to see Charlie in this entire show, it's the perfect bow on this relationship. That's like, we've seen Charlie in all the movies. We've seen their relationship grown. And if that's it, hey, I love it. But Charlie, where was your lip ring? That was, the, that was my only complaint. Where was the lip ring? You got to be wearing the, the lip ring. Come on. That was your, that's your best. It, it looks great. All right, now that I've talked about the things that I like in the show, the nice things in the show, I do want to address some of the naughty stuff, the stuff that I didn't quite like as much. It would be really easy to complain about the special effects of this show, and they're not great. But it's also a TV budget, so that is like the smallest nitpick, where it's just like, eh, I feel like it could look better, but it's a TV budget, so I'm not really complaining about it. I just feel like it's something I have to address. Like, the show is just not... It's not super pretty to look at all the time. There are times where the VFX are just like, yeah, this is a TV budget, and that's completely fine. Also, a lot of the jokes just don't really land for me. Uh, you have to understand that this show is made for families and kids. I am not the target demographic for this show, which is completely okay. As much as I would love for myself to be the target demographic, it does not matter to me. I don't need to be the target demographic. So there's just some jokes that just don't land for me. For example, I'm just really tired of the whole, like, we can't say that anymore joke. It just feels really tired. And it's just, I feel like every freaking show does it, especially when it's a reboot. It's just constant, like, you can't say naughty anymore. It just, it's never that funny to me. And also the whole like, I'm addicted to VR, I have to live in VR, which is like Cal's whole thing, his whole shtick, the entire show, always feels a little overdone of just like kids are addicted to technology. They can't even, they can't even look at the world. They live in the North Pole. Why can't they enjoy this? Always feels a little overdone, but hey, props off to the writers for using that to establish that Cal basically wants to live somewhere else. And that's the reason he uses VR all the time. It's a little cheap, but I appreciated the Topeka reference because I am from Kansas and anytime there's a Kansas reference that's not, we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, that's a huge win for us Kansans because that's the only thing we freaking get. The stupid Wizard of Oz, we're not in Kansas anymore. And finally, the last thing that I didn't really love, which is pretty nitpicky, is I think that the whole Santa is losing his magic thing just feels a little cheap. I just feel like there is a more creative way to show that Santa is losing his touch rather than it just being, well, his magic's gone. I just always feel like the Santa Claus franchise is at its best when it's really leaning into the contract business side of the North Pole. I just think it's the funniest way to do it. I personally don't have like a great solution to that as I said it's a pretty small nitpick and it is a way to get to point A to point B so I completely understand why the writers did it all right so that completes my nice and naughty list for the show there are more things I'd like and dislike from this show and as the episodes come on I might dive more into that and kind of address more of my likes and dislikes but for right now this is just kind of my stream of consciousness of my nice and naughty list because we need to get to our Bernard watch. So if you've seen both episodes, you know that Bernard is mentioned by name one time in the second episode. It's this scene with this stone and Betty basically just mentions, hey, Bernard left this here. That's it. He just gets a quick little shout out. But what if I told you that Bernard is in fact in one of these episodes and not just the part where he's mentioned by name, but physically he is in one of these episodes in the scene where Santa is talking about the succession clause. If you look in the top left corner, there's this silhouette. That's Bernard's silhouette. It is. He is watching Santa look at the succession clause. He is in this episode. And I know you guys might be thinking that's just a shadow. That's not him. That's Bernard. That is definitely his shadow. So I don't really know where this show is going with Bernard. I don't know if they're kind of establishing him as like a villain because he's like watching them or if he's like a guardian angel, but that looks like Bernard. And I'm, I have convinced myself that that is his shadow. And I don't know if at this point I have watched so much Bernard content that I would just see Bernard everywhere. I don't know, but 
that looks like Bernard. And this would kind of make sense because I think the showrunners are aware of how popular Bernard is. So just kind of giving a little tease of him because we have already had the confirmation that David Crumsold is supposedly only in one episode. So just teasing at him feels like a really good way to have Bernard in this show, but not really have him in it, if that even makes sense. And I don't know if this silhouette has been discussed by anyone else. I've really avoided listening to anyone else's opinion on the show just because I wanted to get my opinion out first before hearing anyone else. So I have no idea if this is already something that has been discussed or if it's something that I have discovered. But if anyone asks you, even if it's not Bernard, just pretend like it's Bernard. Why not? So as the show is going forward, I have a few ideas of where I think the show is going to go or really where I would like it to go. First of all, I think that Santa is going to hire Simon as Santa. Now, the reason I think this is going to happen is I think that Santa is going to get into this headspace is that he needs to hire someone that he thinks is just going to do a good job job and Simon is going to be the most qualified person for the job and while Simon clearly from his career would be a fantastic Santa he's not the right person for the job and it's simply because he has his life all together I think the super important trend that we have seen in the past Santa Claus movies is that whoever becomes Santa needs to have their life in shambles their life needs to suck the Santa Claus is what helps them get their life back on track. It's exactly what saved Scott Calvin's life. And when we saw Jack Frost become Santa, it was like immediate evil. He was just an evil Santa Claus. So I think that if you have your life all together, there's no like growth that you're going to have a Santa Claus. I know I'm going like super like deep in this subject, but it's sort of like the super soldier serum in the Marvel movies, mainly more in like the Winter Soldier show. If you've seen the Winter Soldier show, I'm sorry if this is a really weird reference. But the whole point of the super soldier serum is that Captain America got it because he had like a pure heart. That's why he needed it. But when other people got it and they just wanted to be strong, that's what they wanted. It didn't work for them. They became bad guys. But when they had a pure heart and they got the super soldier serum, they didn't know what it was like not being strong beforehand. These other people that got it, they were already strong. And now they're just stronger where a character like Steve Rogers was not strong beforehand, but then he was strong, but he also had a pure heart. So now let's, let's loop back around to the Santa Claus franchise because that's what we're talking about. For the Santa Claus franchise and Santa Claus in general, it feels like Santa Claus needs to have a heart of stone when they become Santa because becoming Santa opens them up. It opens up their heart to being Santa. Like that is what changes them. So I think that Simon, even though he's not a bad guy, he's not a bad guy. He's just not at a place in his life where being Santa is going to mean anything to him. It's just going to be another job, which is not what Santa needs to be. And the person that is going to end up having their life completely in shambles and the person that needs to become Santa is going to end up being the person I've been predicting to be Santa since April, Bernard. And I know that Betty mentioned to Mrs. Claus that elves can't be Santa. I know you are in the comments right now writing that. Elves can't be Santa. End of story. And I just don't want to stop believing. I still think Bernard can be Santa because I think that the show can take this line in two different directions. First of all, Betty could just be lying. She could be lying about the whole thing, or it's a red herring to basically get us off the scent of Bernard being Santa. And second, there are so many fan theories about Bernard being half human. And that's the reason he aged. That's the reason he's going to be so old in the show because he's half human. And that's a really interesting way to go more into this existential storyline that Mrs. Claus has talked about of who's the past Santa, who's the past Mrs. Claus. If a past Santa is Bernard's dad, it, it, that'd be crazy. Like, why do that? That would be super interesting. I don't think this show is going to go in the direction I think it's going to go. I have to keep reminding myself that this show is made for kids and it's made for family. So I don't think they're going to go in these crazy directions just because it's not even like I don't think they're willing to take risks. I just think it's better to play safe. Just make a fun show for families and we'll see. Maybe these uh, theories that I have will come true. And if not, it's totally fine. Maybe I will create my own Santa Claus's franchise in the future and just do 
all of my ideas. I'll throw them all out there. But for right now, that's all I have for the first two episodes of the Santa Claus's show. Thank you so much for listening to me rant about this. This was a lot of fun. I'm really having a lot of fun talking about this show and just this franchise in general. Thank you so much if you have recently subscribed. Oh, I appreciate it so much. It means so much to me. Uh, yeah, just thank you so much for subscribing. Leave a like on this video. It helps out a ton. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you when we talk about episode three.